Okay, so got everything laid out on the table, ready to start going in the engine. Got the engine sitting here. We'll start by putting the cam in, lifters. They got just some new LS7 lifters, new trays. Some Melling 10296 pump, and it has the red spring in it, I believe. I think it comes with the red spring in it. It also came with a blue spring for less pressure and a Copal Camaro spring for more pressure, but I'm just gonna leave the high pressure spring in it. New timing gear, new timing chain, new cam retainer plate. I always get a new one of these, even if I'm doing like a stock bottom end rebuild, I'll, I'll still always get a new one of these because this little gasket likes to get flat on it. New rockers. These are the like the Summit brand Trunnion upgraded kit, so we'll try those, see how they work out. Hopefully they don't fall apart. ARP studs, BTR 7 layer head gaskets, and then the heads that were reworked by Headflow Inc. on YouTube. So they're stainless valves, they're larger than stock valves, it's just an 862 head, ported, larger valves, the BTR dual springs, the 660 springs, and it's a BTR Stage 2 twin turbo cam. Hopefully with everything I have here, it should be enough to at least make like 403 horsepower at 20 pounds of boost. So let's get started. Alrighty, so we'll put a little bit of assembly lube on the cam. I'm just going to goober it up. And I decided to go with the stage 2 this time. I, I've done stage 3, BTR stage 3 cams a couple times. The last setup that I had was the Escalade. And I had the BTR stage 3 turbo cam with the high ram and a big turbo, 88103 turbo, and I don't think that combination was very happy with the converter that I had in it. I didn't have the converter spec for the build, so yeah, I don't think it was very happy with that. And I'm also not planning on avoiding the like low RPM torque as much on this setup, because this is not a stock bottom end setup, so I'm not gonna be as concerned about uh, high revving and low RPM torque so I won't be trying to avoid it as much as I would with like a stock bottom end setup so so I stuck with the stage two and I'm using the truck intake on this one so I should be able to utilize that low rpm torque a little bit more and not be as worried about it with the forged bottom end and then I can keep the the revving low maybe do the one two shift around 6500 keep the transmission happy and all that good stuff all right, so. All right, that went in nice. Spins around nice and easy. Cool, cool. Don't know if I said it in the last clip, but I am planning on having a converter spec for this setup also, so that should help a lot. I know the the Mustang with similar size twins on it spooled really fast, even with the stage three cam and high ram. I'm not really looking to be spinning this one as high. All right, so we'll start putting the lifters in. I'll just put a little assembly lube on it. Might be a little excessive, but it's not gonna hurt anything. Also got a new pack of dowels because I didn't have any dowels for this. I guess also with the assembly lube too, this might sit for a little bit. So I guess I'm not really being too shy with it because there's a good chance that it might sit for another couple months and that stuff. We'll start to move around, run, run off of where it is. Make sure you guys comment about how you can't trust me now because I'm using this kind of hammer on an engine. I will never trust a guy who uses a carpenter's hammer on an engine. All right, so now that I have the retainer plate and the guide on there, I'm just gonna spin the crank around once just to make sure they're not hitting either one of the bolts. I don't know for sure that these are the right size bolts, but if you put bolts in here that are too long, like if you mix up these bolts and some of the long oil pan bolts, you can actually, the, the weight on the crank can actually hit these bolts so I'm just gonna turn this around all right so here's an example watch this there that hit now watch this no it doesn't hit No, it hits. So these bolts are too long. The counterweight on the crank can actually hit there. And I've seen it before on you know Facebook or whatever. People get the whole motor together, never spin the thing over, and then they can't can't figure out why the crank won't turn over. So 
that's what could happen if you don't have the right size bolts in there. So to put the timing chain on, I'm just going to make sure that the crank dot is at the top. Piston is at top dead center. And then I'll make sure that the cam dot is down. And then I can put the chain on, line this thing up, and then put the bolts in. Still make sure the dot is down, get the crank teeth on. Then we can put a bolt in. Then what we'll do is crank it over all the way around a couple times and make sure the dots are still lined up. Should crank it over two times. And then see crank dot and cam dot is still lined up so that's good. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the oil pump now. I did put some assembly lube inside the gears. It's been around a couple times. I normally don't lube them up or put oil in it or anything but I figured I'd do it on this one first time for everything right so there's your oil port that goes into the block right there this hole has to line up with that there we go and we got four bolts All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and chase all of the head bolt holes. So I just have this old head bolt that's, you know, got slots chopped down it. You can see they're nice and clean. <clears throat> so I'll go ahead and do this one. I'm just gonna do all these by hand. I'm not gonna do it with an impact or anything. I would like to just, you know, some things I like to do by hand, just so I can feel what's going on. So we'll do this quick. Get this thing out of here. Now you can see the slits in it are not as clean and shiny because it's starting to pull crap out of there. Some of them are cleaner than others, but it's nice to check each one because the factory head bolts have like some sealer on them and that stuff can get stuck inside there. So just want to get all that junk out. Alrighty, so getting the little porcupine assembled here and I'm just kind of hand threading first couple in there and then we'll go through it with the wrench. And I was just thinking as I was doing this, these bolts are half the cost of my first swap that I did on the Ranger. My first budget swap that I did on this truck like four or five years ago that I did videos on. It was like it was like 800 bucks I think for the whole swap. It's like six or eight hundred. So these bolts now are half the cost of the entire swap that I did. So it's just kind of crazy to think about that so I'll go ahead and uh, get these things in there not tightened but all the way in and uh, then we'll come back and put the heads on head gasket heads okay so I did get all of the head studs in there now I before I put those in I took some acetone and kind of wiped down the deck surface so now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and put the head gasket on Make sure that thing sits down all the way. Get it over the dowels. Okay, I don't, really don't want to go down. All right. Also want to make sure that the coolant holes are at the back of the block. So coolant flows in the block, up through these holes, and then back through the heads front of the gasket doesn't have those. Then I can take the head put it over and slide this guy down and make sure it seats all the way in in the dowels. I can start going ahead and putting the nuts and washers on. These washers have like a little groove side on the back and a smooth side on the top. So groove side is going to go down towards the head. Then you got a nice smooth surface for the nut to spin on. It says to lubricate the threads and lubricate the bottom of the nut before you put it on and then there's a torque sequence to follow and it goes 30 pounds, 60 pounds, 90 pounds. So I'm going to go ahead and 
do that. Okay, so we got them all kind of just hand snug down. So it does have a, a torque sequence, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I'll do three passes there, then do the tops. 30 on the first pass, then 60, then 90 foot pounds. We got both the heads torqued. I'm just going to go ahead and put the push rods in. These are just regular stock length BTR push rods. So the heads were done by Jeff at Headflow Inc. I got the cam, the springs, and the push rods from Jack at Squirrel Tuned. He's a BTR dealer, so I bought them from him. So thanks guys for your help on this stuff. All right, now the other end we can put the rockers in. I do have to find the little tray that goes underneath the rocker though. I don't know if I have any of those. So I have one up on the shelf and then I have one in a spare head on a set of rockers right now. So I'll throw this thing in. I'll get the other, the other one out of the other head. And then we should be good. All right, so I hope I don't have any issues with these rockers. Um, they seem okay. Uh, I'm just nervous about it because I've never used anything but stock rockers before. So the stock rockers always work really nice. So it's like, why why change something that you know works? But uh, I got this engine just as a bare block, so I didn't have heads or anything with it. So I didn't have a full set of rockers. So I figured instead of, instead of getting another set, I would just try this, you know, step out of my comfort zone a little bit, try something new and uh, see how I like it. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep getting these things hooked up and then after that I think I'll be done for the day. I do have a valley cover for it. Um, I, I have to clean it though and the timing cover and rear cover I still got to clean too. I did clean the oil pan. The oil pan's nothing going to be, oil pan's not going to be anything fancy. I'm just using a stock truck oil pan. All right, so got this thing all assembled to this point. I do want to clean the front cover and the rear cover a little bit. Uh, these valve covers I have are already pretty clean. I would like to get some new seals and stuff in there. I don't have the seals on the bottom side, but getting getting pretty close here. So the rest is just like putting on the windage tray and front rear oil pan, then should be done. Next, I'm gonna start working on the transmission though. So this thing's pretty much done. I did wash the case for this thing the other day, then I can start assembling this. I'm waiting on another aluminum piston. I think that's all I'm waiting on, and then I should be able to get this transmission back together. And we're getting we're getting close. Just gotta buy like fuel system parts, everything back in. So I feel like we're kind of getting to a point now where maybe stuff will start moving along pretty quickly. So thanks for watching. Have a good one.